Here's a negotiation technique nobody ever thinks of. Hi, I'm Chuck Vosberg from Next Home Gulf to Bay, along with my wife, Pat, your favorite realtors. And I'd like to share a little story with you and show you a negotiation technique that we use very frequently, and it almost always works. And it's so simple, most people don't even think about it. So you probably know that Pat and I are both real estate negotiation experts. We're certified in that. We're less than 1% of realtors in the country have that certification, but there's one technique anybody can use. It doesn't require any kind of practice or anything. And that is to, you ready for it? Ask nicely. So let me, let me tell you how it works. So we had a transaction recently where it came right down to the wire. It was time to close and the lender would not release the funds. And the reason why they wouldn't release the funds is they didn't like the way there was one line written in the appraisal that was just kind of hanging them up. And, you know, the details aren't important here, but the appraiser could have written it a different way, uh, but they didn't. They wrote it the way they wrote it, and they were having a big problem with it. So it was a situation, there was a lot at stake, the person that was moving in was one that her lease had already expired. She needed to move in with you know her and her kid or else they were gonna have to find some place to stay temporarily. And in our case, we had the seller and they had plans for that money too. So, you know, people were really counting on it closing on time, especially the buyer. So I contacted the lender, found out what the problem was. That, that's step number one, is get all of the information. Step one, get all the information so that you know what the real problem is. Because frequently, the surface level problem isn't the root. So you gotta get down to the root. And in this case, there was one sentence in that appraisal that the underwriters were having a big problem with. And, and it really came down to one word, actually. So next step, address the root of the problem. So in this case, I called the appraiser. Now, a lot of realtors are afraid of appraisers because there's certain things by law we are not allowed to discuss with appraisers. And appraisers, like anybody else, do not like it when people call and tell them how to do their job. So uh, I was faced with two choices here. I could call him and say, hey, look, man, you made a mistake on this. You need to fix it. In which case, he would probably tell me to mind my own business and it would delay the closing. In, in this case, it would have delayed it by at least a week. Or I could enlist his help. So that's the technique that almost always worked. So instead of making an adversarial situation, I called him up I said, look, I'm hoping you can help me. Here's the situation I explained about the closing and you know the girl and her kid wanting to move in. So that way kind of laid the groundwork. They, they have to have a reason to want to help. So that was the reason. We're, we're not, it's not me asking, I'm asking on behalf of an innocent third party that's going to be negatively affected by this. So just to review, step one, get to the root of the problem. Step two, have a reason why they would want to help you. And, and it can be just as simple as, as, look, I need your help. That's fine, too. So I explained the situation to him and told him what the, uh, what the lender had said to me. And, and his position was, look, man, that shouldn't matter. I'm like, look, I know that. But it, it matters to them. They're holding the whole thing up. Is there any way that you could rewrite this and use a different word here? And... He's like, yeah, I can do that. He goes, it's stupid, but I can do it. And I'm like, look, man, if, you, if you'd be willing to do that, that would really help a lot, and that would get them to be able to move in on time. So he's like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do that, and I'll shoot it over to him. No problem at all. So he did it. Everything was fine. It closed on time. Now, was the whole thing stupid? Of course it was. But sometimes you have to play by other people's rules, and... And that's thing number three, is that you have to keep your own pride out of it. It doesn't matter who's right. 
what matters is what's right. And what's right is that lady needed to move in. So what needed to happen to make that happen? We needed to appease the lender and we're playing by their rules. They're not going to change just because I rant and rave and tell them how terrible this is and, and what all the consequences are. Because they probably, and I'm just guessing, but they may not care and they may have their own circumstances that they're dealing with. So my point of all this is, is that when you're negotiating, the, the default position that we fall into as humans because of our own pride is to make it an adversarial relationship right from the get-go. Now, sometimes it turns that way, and, and there are techniques to deal with that if it does. But don't be the one that makes it adversarial, and especially don't show up that way. Show up in a way where you're asking for help. People generally want to help other people if there's a reason for it. That's my big lesson for today. You'd be amazed how many people who are in this business and you know do a negotiation all day every day just like we do who don't know this simple technique. It's such common sense. You know, it kind of makes me wonder, what did your mama teach you in some cases? But that's my tip for today. Approach it asking for help. Be friendly. You'll be amazed what you can get if you ask nicely. So that's it. Chuck Vosberg from Next Home Gulf to Bay. If you've got any questions, you need anything, you just let us know. No strings attached. We put humans over houses. So call Pat or I. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.